Hey, welcome back to Whitetail Garage. Uh, in this episode, we're going to actually take a look at the wife's navigator. It's doing this weird thing with the stereo where it's cutting out on her. Uh, it sounds like maybe it's the amplifier. It gets real muffled uh, in the in the just the front center speaker plays and it's real muffled. That's what she's saying and it seems to cut out and she can't hear when she's talking on the phone with somebody. So we're going to go for a quick uh, test drive, see if we can get it to reproduce it and then figure out see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. All right, so this is for the Navigator that looks like that. Uh, this is a 2015. So let's see if we can uh, hear it make that issue. Now I'm gonna switch to the uh, GoPro so I can use my phone to check the issue she was talking about with the phone. All right, hopefully you can see and hear me just fine. Don't know exactly what direction that GoPro's facing. So let's start the engine. Shut the door, get the AC going, get it to connect to my phone. So, easiest way we're going to ensure we don't get the copyright is we're going to watch one of my videos. So far, everything seems good. It just all of a sudden cut out, and it is only playing. Out of this front little bitty speaker right here. That's it. Everything else is not playing any audio whatsoever. So let's get it back to the house and see if we can figure out how to fix it. I really think that is a amplifier issue. So I'm going to do a little bit of research. Uh, and then we'll see, maybe even pull the amplifier. Here's the amplifier. Right here. There's two bolts on top and two bolts on bottom. Looks like it's a 10 millimeter. Okay, yeah, I just confirmed the top passenger side nut is back behind the stereo so I'll have to actually remove the the CD player part of this there's a you know a silver box there that uh, the CD player goes into I'll have to remove that in order to get that out so I'm actually going to stop here and start taking apart the top two bolts down here look So these two wires for all of the controls up here, one light, one light bulb, and then one, uh, the 12 volt for the uh, cigarette lighter. So I think this is what's in the way. Right here, these fins are the amplifier. So I think I take these out and that's what was in the way of the top bolts that I could tell. Okay, so I don't even necessarily need to unbolt that, but those are the two top bolts for the amplifier, and then the two bottom ones are probably going to be most easily tackled from the side down there on the side of the console. So I will get these two out, and then I'll move to the bottom. I saw on YouTube they said they were uh, five sixteenths or eight millimeter uh, bolts. I have nuts on studs, and they are ten millimeter nuts. All right, so I got the bottom nut out. That one's a little harder to get to from this side. I may go around to the other side and pop that panel out and get that nut out. But for now, it's loose. So I'm going to see, because these are all just studs anyway, I'm going to see if I can just take these all out. There's, uh, I think, three clips. Let me see. Yeah, three clips. Then I'm going to undo and uh, see if I can pop it out. All right, with the three clips undone, looks like I can easily pull this out. Okay, well, rather than bang it around, I'm going to go ahead and take these top two screws out so I can get access to 
the big open access to this and just be able to easily slide it out without trying to break or scratch anything. And the screen slides out. And there's the amplifier. And there's my part number for the amplifier. And I'm going to have to research and see if I can find. Now, we're going to take this over to the bench because out of all the things I saw online, I did find one thing with a TikTok video that was super short and I have no idea if it's valid or not, but we're going to do a little test here since I have to wait on parts anyway. And I needed to get this out to make sure I had the right part number just to make sure because I think there's a difference between a THX amplifier and a non-THX if that even exists. But that's some of the things that I had seen, so I want to I wanted to have my part number before I ordered the part because they're like $600. So one of the things that I did find, uh, like I said, for just very quickly, and I don't even know if I could find it again and link it, but if I can, I will. But it was just a TikTok video that said that basically they had identified that these little things are grounding out on the inside on the circuit board. And that by flattening these and putting it back together, that generally fixes the problem. I don't know that I'll hammer these down flat. i got to check to see if there's any kind of core that I need to be worried about when buying a new one. Because if I can get a core for this one, then I need to be considerate of that. Banging these down may not allow it to be a core. Uh, but So I'm going to get it apart and see if I can confirm that these are in fact touching. And then maybe put in some some tape or or something that I think will separate this at least short term to test it and then I could take it back apart and then uh, maybe flatten these out or if I can confirm that that's actually the problem so let's get uh, the right uh, torx bit these are torx bit screws so let's get that right torx bit and then get this guy apart on the bench all right so got a t10 torx bit here torx driver so let's uh, pull this guy apart together and see. I've never had one of these apart. I'm not sure if I'm even doing this right, but I'll get it apart and see. So you can clearly see the marks on here where this is rubbing. And again, that TikTok video suggested that that was the fix. That looks like it's very much supposed to be that way. So I don't have any way to suggest otherwise. I think we've got, this feels like it's got heat sink uh, material on the back side of this that's up against these for cooling. So I, so I don't want to remove it to go investigate any further because I'll break that seal and I have to put new heat sink on it. So I'm going to leave it like that, but I'm going to put a piece of electrical tape right here, reassemble it and see if that impacts it. Again, I, I have no idea if that's something that has to happen, that this is supposed to ground across all of that because with it, with this piece, bolted to this piece, which is clearly bolted to here. I, I'm not sure. I'm going to go back and double check something real quick. Yeah, so I was just double checking. Like this piece that is making contact across all these, which is again also bolted to the main chassis. These are bolted to the metal frame of the dash. So theoretically the chassis on this is grounded and therefore you're grounding across all of these, which I'm not sure what they are, but clearly you see rub marks where they've been making contact. Again, it's worth a shot. Either way, I had to get this out to get the part number, so I knew I was getting the right thing. So either way, I've got to get it out. Uh, and it's just a few minutes worth of work to get it in and out, so I'm going to run a piece of tape across that, put it back together, see if that in fact does insulate it and, and cures my issue, solves my problem, and we'll go from there. So, again, I wouldn't normally trust anything that I see on a TikTok video, right? But those guys may have just been joking around. But for 600 bucks, and I got to take it out anyway, it's worth a shot just to remove all those little screws and then put this tape on and see if it fixes my problem. 
So again, just going across here, this wouldn't be the permanent solution if in fact this does fix it because of how thin this tape is, that thing is just gonna rub right through it. But for the initial test, I think it will be fine. I don't think it's gonna rub through it. So just some standard Scotch electrical tape. And let's test this theory out. It feels like the way this whole thing is designed that it's meant to do that. So I have every bit of a feeling that it's gonna act completely differently or I don't know, maybe this burns up the amplifier completely. Maybe it doesn't respond at all. So again, I don't know if those, if that TikTok was a joke or not, but we'll work together to identify whether or not it was and if this is actually a solution. That's, that's all I'm gonna put in for screws. So now I'm gonna go put it back in the car and see what, see what we, so we see. So it worked by just isolating that. So it definitely doesn't have to have that to, uh, to work. So that's a good thing. Now, uh, again, that other video that I saw, they, they flattened out that center section, but I have a feeling that may cause impact for a core if I opt to go that route with the core. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this reinstall button, everything back up and go for a test drive and we'll see if it fixed it. Well, did a 20 minute test drive and got all the way back to the house and it did not mess up, which was, I think the furthest it's gone since it started messing up. But then I stopped the car, killed the engine, opened the door, closed the door, started it back up and it immediately started doing the problem. So didn't fix it. I was afraid of that. So what they're suggesting is this phone has wore out. All of these and these need heat transfer. And so I don't know that this is just like normal foam. So I'm taking off these old pads. I bought some new ones, thermal pads. So let's see if those are gonna work. these have been basically smashed down to being super thin. All right, so I've removed all the old off. So my next step, I'm just gonna take some alcohol on a Q-tip and uh, try and clean that surface up. And then I'm gonna go back and clean off the potential cotton left behind by this with an electronics cleaner. So I was afraid that wouldn't come off, so I've got some 220 sandpaper and I'm just gonna scuff that area and see if that takes off the remainder. The surface is not super smooth, so I'm not worried about scratching up as much as I am just removing this old material making sure we've got good thermal transfer. All right, so I went and hit this with electronic parts cleaner to make sure we didn't have any issues there. And then now I believe, I'm gonna pull one of these out so I can validate that they are the right thickness and it looks like We've got an adhesive or protective layer on either side of this that needs to be removed. This stuff doesn't come with any kind of instruction, but that's what I'm going to go based off of that this layer needs to be removed. And again, both sides have that layer on it. I'm going to wait till I get it all in place to take that top layer off. That way I don't accidentally touch it.
Okay, so that finishes that. Now the next concern would be making sure these surfaces are clean enough to accept that same. The transistors back here seem to be in a good spot. These chips do not seem to be in a good spot. I didn't see any other issue with the board anywhere with the exception of all of the wear marks in that side. I'm going to move forward with leaving them and the reason for that is I had gone in and put electrical tape as you saw in those other videos and didn't see a difference in the performance of the amplifier. It performed the same exact way. And so that being said, I uh, I didn't see value in, uh, see that's frustrating. Didn't see value in uh, Trying to like solder those back or anything like that. So, all right, all the backing removed. I'm to add this guy. You can tell by the rock here that it's raised a good amount, and that these dimples are going to push down and make sure we get good contact there. All right, it's been a few days uh, since we installed that amplifier and haven't had any issues whatsoever. It hasn't gone that long since it started messing up without messing up, if that makes any sense. So I believe it's fixed. If that changes, I'll pin a comment, make sure that I, I follow up with that if I end up having to replace the amplifier. But that was $10 worth of thermal pads I found online, uh, replacing those thermal pads inside the amplifier and, uh, and putting it back together. That seemed to fix it. Again, this was the, the static the speaker's cutting out, um, uh, the speaker just going to just the center. It had all kinds of different behavior. You couldn't hear anybody when talking on the phone. The person in the, the person in the vehicle couldn't hear the person talking on the phone, but the person on the phone could hear the person in the vehicle, if that makes sense. Uh, so this fixed all those issues. Haven't had uh, any issues uh, in driving it uh, normally for over three days. In fact, uh, the wife's out driving it right now uh, and enjoying it. Uh, with the stereo working. Hey, don't forget uh, to leave a like, hit that subscribe button if you thought this added any kind of value whatsoever. Uh, we've got more coming. We've got merch, so whitetailgarage.com. Uh, go there and, and you can get uh, a t-shirt. Uh, only a couple of designs right now, but that'll keep uh, updating. So if you like the channel and, and want to support the channel, uh, that's where you go. It's whitetailgarage.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.